What up, everybody? It's your boy, Kevin Nguyen, Yakuza Barber, representing Wall Professional. So you guys are in for a treat today. Today, I'm going to be doing something creative, something modern, the mod cut. The mod cut is a combination of texture, working with the top, bringing length to the bottom, okay? So what we're gonna do in the sides first is we're gonna do a transition from short to longer, light to dark. When we think about transition, we think about gradients, and gradients is contrast, contrast from light to dark, okay? And that's breaking down the fade for you guys. All right, first clip of choice is gonna be my wall match clip cordless with the number three guard. Now I'm gonna bring the camera closer to here so you guys see the model a little better and see what I'm actually doing. All right, now we're gonna start debulking. Now I'd like to debulk and start off with a number three. Lever close. That way it leaves some dark length so I can combine it or match it to the top. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment and ask those questions. I'll do my best to uh, answer precisely. Okay. Now that I get to see the hair texture, I want to start off something with a bigger guard, not straight to the skin because a lot of times when we start skin, it might be too short for the client. So what I'm gonna do is attach my number one guard. Now seeing the gradients of the hair and the hair texture, you can see that it's a little more fine than thick. So when you're using your clipper, make sure that's not an aggressive clipper where it's too short to the scalp. You want a more natural blend. That way it flatters the hair and creates a softness when you're blending. Now that's the number one close. What I'm gonna do afterwards is open the clipper all the way, right here. And you're gonna see the motion of my clipper gliding outwards. Now what, that, what helps me the most when it comes to blending to a longer transition is gliding that clipper, taking away off the scalp instead of rubbing the clipper onto the scalp. When you're using that full blade onto the scalp, you're creating a line, a harsh line. But if you are gliding it softly, keeping a light hand, you're softening up the line, getting rid of guidelines. Perfect. Now, as you can see, my blend started from behind the ear. Behind the ear is where we place our focal point, the focal point of the blend blur bursting outwards, okay? So this is technically called a burst fade when you're placing a focal point in a round curvature behind the ear and bursting outwards, kind of like a sunset. Perfect. So we do have a question wondering what tools you're using today. So the choice of tools is gonna to be the gold Magic Clip cordless. And a great feature about these is the stagger tooth blade where it's an uneven cut, cut, but it makes it more stagger. So it's creating texture while blending. And also it has a DLC blade, which keeps a cooler runtime on the blade. So it doesn't heat up as much. 
Magic Clip Cordless Gold Edition. Now softening up this dark area, the dark shade, I'm gonna attach a number one and a half, lever close. Now, if you're unsure about placing your lines or what you're gonna blend out, be very careful. You always wanna open up your lever in, the, in that case. Open the lever now. As you can see, the blend's already there. There's just some refinement that we had to do. The refinement is when you're looking at the hair and the scalp, you see dark shades. Now when we're developing that barber's eye, we're very picky about our blends and we wanna create a seamless blend. So the refining and detailing technique comes at the end where you're picking out the dark shades and blending outwards. All right, finishing off this blend now, around the dark area, I'm gonna use a number two, lever close, and just glide at the dark area, right beneath where we put that number three. Great. Now I want to create a line. I want to be more creative and create a line into to this uh, haircut. That way it gives it unsymmetrical look. Now, when we think about art, art most of the time is symmetrical, but for me, it's more unsymmetrical because it's something they're not, it's uncommon and it's not used to. So I'm gonna place a line right here going into the hair. Now what I'm using is the Cordless Detailers Li, and these come very sharp, so you gotta be careful when you're using these trimmers. So we did have a question uh, wondering why you switched from a 1.5 attachment to a 2. So for me, my methods of fading is usually step by step. Now, when you're using a smaller guard, of course, it's going to be in the lower area. It's uh, going to be a graduated fade. So if you're using a half guard, we're going to end up right here. Using a 1, raising it a little bit. 1.5 above here two around that ridge and three to finish off that blend. And if you want to do it reverse, then you do the three, two, one and a half, one to the half. Great question. Thank you. Now we're gonna line up around the perimeters to give it more of a sharp look. Now when I'm using this technique, I always wanna pull the ear down, use my corners of the blade, elevate it up a little bit, and just kind of sketch it out around the ear. That way you don't bring in the line too much.
All right, now to give this more of an effect, I'm gonna blend right here in a shorter contrast. That way it's a light to dark look. Now what I'm gonna do is use the same clipper, lever open, and just create a guide for me right here. Now that you see the area lining up back here, I want to take it down to the next level, which is the clipper close. Okay. Now to blend in that initial guideline right in the bottom, we're going to open the lever halfway. When I'm blending out a skin fade or a skin taper, I'll only use three methods, which is close, halfway, and all the way to blend out lines. Okay, that looks pretty cool. I like that right there. Now what we're gonna do is edge up the curvature line, which is just right here. Now when we're edging up this area, we gotta make sure that we, we don't wanna push anything too much back, meaning this is a natural lineup. And if you push it back too much, it will look unnatural. So it's always safer and better to start off with the natural curvatures. As you can see, I did that pretty easily. Now the method is, I'm using my knuckle onto the cheek and I'm rotating it back and forth to create that curvature for me. Just like that. I'm bringing a fade brush and just brush away all the leftover hair. That way I, I can create clarity for my blend. Cool. Now bring it on to the opposite side. I'm gonna show you guys a reverse graduated fade where I'm bringing from a higher guard down to a smaller guard. So it'll be the three, two, one and a half to the one and a half.
Just a heads up, we are about 15 minutes in. Perfect. Thank you. Now, dropping down to number two. So remember, when it comes to fading contrast, it's either a graduation technique going upwards or a reverse graduation technique going downwards. Now with our one and a half lever open, just to be safe, I'm gonna work right below the two. Now this method usually applies to someone with finer hair. Now, the reason why I use this technique for finer hair is because if you're just starting off with a trimmer, because a lot of barbers and a lot of cosmos see the barbers use this technique, where we're placing the trimmer all the way down here, knocking everything off to his skin. Now, that might be too close or too short for them. To create a soft, natural blend where it flatters texture and movement, you want to create more of a natural fade. All right, closing the lever now with a one and a half still. Using the same technique going below it. Okay, moving on to the one now. Just to be safe, open the lever, place your one right, be right below your previous step. Now we're going to close the lever to a one close and work right around the perimeter to soften up the edges. Now again, remember, this is a mod cut where it's gonna be a combination of texture, length on top, movement, also building weight to the back and a faded transition on the side. Now bringing it down to the next level, I'm gonna use the clipper close. And the reason why I do that is because I want to make sure I establish a line where it creates that light look. Closing the clipper all the way, moving about half a finger length above the natural hairline.
open the lever halfway now to remove the established guideline. Again, I'm using the cordless gold magic clips with a DLC blade, which means diamond-like coating. All right, let's open the lever all the way and soften up the line. Now, remember the method is when you're using the blade onto the scalp like this, you're trying to make a line. But if you're tilting the blade up like this and raking at it, you're softening up a line. So instead of raising it, you can soften up a line by just angling the clipper differently. Now I'll go in in detail with my half guard. Attaching the half guard, we're gonna open the lever just to be safe and soften up that dark curved line right here. closing it halfway now because I see that it's not working the way I want it to. So we're going to shorten it up a little bit. Okay, I like the way this is blended. It looks soft, looks natural, just the way I like to place it. Okay, now to sharpen up the edges, same thing, cordless detailers, LI, using the T-wide blade, curving the natural lineup outwards. So that way we can make that C mark, that curvature line. Every single time you want to place a round lineup, you always want to use the corners of your trimmer. Remember that. So we did have a question wondering if you would always create this look dry or if there's a situation where you'd cut this on wet hair. Now, great question. If it was wet hair, now our clippers can't cut wet or dry hair, but if I were to cut it, this with wet hair, I would create more of a connection. Meaning if it's dry, it leaves this little outer perimeter, which I like, the little dark contrast with the weight on top. But if I wanna blend it in, I will wet down the hair, comb it down to the truest length and blend it in. So with wet hair, I would create more of a blended look, a transition or connection. With dry hair, I would create more of a disconnected look. Great question. All right. Now we can start working on the top. I'm working with the top. Remember, this is a mod cut. 
we're gonna work where it flatters the hair, where it looks natural and where it creates movement and texture. Let's get a good angle for you guys. Right there. Now, when I'm filling the hair, I feel that it's thicker on top. So what I wanna create is movement, texture. So I'm gonna soften this up by creating texture. Wetting down the hair. Remember, when we wet down the hair, we wanna wet it down internally and externally, meaning within the hair and then outside the hair. And the more saturated the hair is, the more you have control of it. When it's dry hair, you're fighting against the hair. When it's wet hair, you have more control. Uh, it moves into the direction where you comb it to, which is a lot better. Now, what I'm doing now is just combing everything with a natural growth, meaning I'm looking at the cow look back here. I'm going to comb with a natural growth, a natural wave pattern, not against it. Okay, another side front profile view. We're going a little closer. Just so everyone can see. Now, combing this down, we're gonna see where we're gonna start our first section, which is gonna be the profile center section, straight down the middle. Like I said, with wet hair, it's easier to control to section. With dry hair, not so much. So I'm pretty sure a lot of people out there know this, but any model with colored hair, it's thirsty. We wanna hydrate the hair. Okay, now I'm gonna create a profile center section and I'm gonna use my first guideline right at the apex. If you're wondering where the apex is, it's right on top of the head, the highest point of the head, okay? My first section is gonna be going forward, and after that, I'm gonna turn my comb to the side. It's gonna go horizontally. Vertically, horizontally. Now, as you can see, I use my clipper for that motion because the clipper is just a lot easier for me. Now, it's all personal preference. If you want to use the shears, you can, but for me, the clipper just knocks through it a lot easier. Okay. Taking this section, making it horizontal. I'm going to comb right at the apex area, find my guideline, which should be right about in the middle right there and connect it from the left to the right side. Moving an inch forward, creating that same guideline, bringing it up, connecting right to left.
Now we're gonna get creative with the top. I wanna leave these two sides right here just to create some weight and more movement while everything else is even. These are gonna be a little longer. Just a heads up, you are about 30 minutes in. Perfect. Now bringing it back, I'm gonna pull this up and we're gonna start point cutting. Point cutting with the clippers. Now for me, that's a lot faster than actual shears. And I just gotta move quickly through the hair to make it staggered. We do have a question uh, wondering how you work around a strong cowlick. Great question. Now with a cowlick, like I said, you never want to fight against it. You want to fight with it. Okay. Now working with a cowlick, I'm going to turn the model around so you guys see the cowlick. Now the cowlick area lays right here. And when I'm combing with the hair, I'm not cutting it too short to where it spikes up. I'm combing it and leaving the weight so that way it's heavier and it's more movement and it lays with the hair. So with a cowlick, when you cut it too short, it flies up. When there's enough weight or length on it, it lays down. So it's always better to leave more weight with a cowlick. Okay. Now we're gonna blow dry the hair. I like the weight of the back area, so we're gonna leave it. And we're gonna see what we create. So also controlling the cowlick, I'll extend my middle finger, press it right on the cowlick and apply the blow dry with high air pressure around the cowlick area. That way you can see the natural flow of the hair. We're going to shake away the leftover hair. We're going to bring everything to the front to see the fringe. Now what we're going to do is just trim the middle, leaving it as offset. creating those bars on the sides. Now we're doing that with zero elevation, straight across.
So we did have a question uh, wondering how long did it take you for you to be confident in these short, very detailed cuts? Now, it all depends on you as a person. I think um, when it comes down to it, it's, pers it's just perspective. All depends on how bad you want to learn it. Uh, for me, it took me about two years because I didn't have the resources like these videos back then. But uh, now that there's videos, live education, classes going all around the world, attend those, be consistent, be more uh, available and, and uh, don't be scared of growth. That way you can learn a lot faster. So for you, with all the resources, it should take you a couple months to learn all this. I always see it as this. Uh, for me, I used to be scared of longer hair. I used to be scared of texture, but that's just my weakness. And it's okay with having weakness. It's keeping the weakness as a problem. So you want to turn your weaknesses into strengths. Okay. Now this is more of a natural cut. We're leaving a natural, uh, some slight texture on top, external texture, even way in the back, the faded transition on the side. Ladies and gentlemen, the mod cut. I'm Yakuza Barber with Wall Professional. Thank you for your time. See you later.